Welcome, welcome, welcome. We appreciate your time. My name is Rachel Cruz and I am the Golden Bunga Awards National Ambassador. I'm so happy that you guys are here, part of this because it's going to be a very insightful, informative session. And um, just before I go on and introduce our, uh, you know, our panelists today, I just want to first um, acknowledge all of you. I can't see everybody right now, um, but just hi, thank you for registering. This is our first Q&A Golden Blind Awards QA Live, right? And the purpose of our get together right now on a Friday evening um, is wherever you are, it is 6, oh no, 7 p.m. EST. So wherever you are across Canada, I know we all, we're all at a different time zone, but um, the purpose is so that we can answer your questions. So um, the committee actually just put stuff together so that you, you know, we can have an interaction after. Just to let you know though, there is a program flow. So I'll be introducing myself, the panelists, our co-founders, and then we have a set of questions that they'll answer for you guys. And then we're gonna open it up to all of you. So just, uh, remind, just to remind you guys, if you can turn on your video so we can see your beautiful, excited faces, that would be amazing. Okay, so I talked a lot and really fast. Um, yeah, guys, so again, my name is Rachel Cruz. I'm a Toronto-based TV host, producer, writer here. And, you know, um, I'm also, like I mentioned, I'm a GBA national ambassador. When they started this years ago, I was so excited because the vision, I saw the vision. And now we're still in our, what, fifth year coming this year? And um, I'm also, um, yeah, I'm a content contributor for ABS-CBN and an independent consultant for Arbonne. So that's a little bit about me. Now I really want to take the time to introduce our special people in our group here. Of course, we have RDG, Ronnie Delagana. He is our GBA co-founder, also iCube Media, iCube Media. So he's our founding directors of the Filipino Canadian National Congress. Um, it's FCNC, that's the acronym, and he is serving as the first vice president chair of trade committee and deputy vice chair for youth and internship committee. So he is, you know, he started this, um, he's a co-founder for the Golden Millennium Awards. As you know, it's a nationwide search for outstanding Filipino Canadians. And he's also the CEO and owner of the iCubo Media, which publishes Kubo Magazine. He's also an event organizer. Um, some of his notable events, uh, which we went to like way back when, that's how I first met them, is uh, the Youth Leader Summit, uh, the Toronto Pascuan Village, hello, Sam Milby, and consider what, you know, he, one of the biggest like Christmas festivals, he does it every year in Toronto. He's also an engineering graduate and, you know, IT professional. So you wanna say hi, RDG? Hello, Rachel. Medyo mahaba, no? That's a long introduction. Okay, Hello, just... everyone. Thank you for coming. Okay. And of course, I would love to introduce you a co-founder for GBA. Uh, we have Joey Fabula, because he's fabulous. Um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there he is. And he's currently our technology specialist. Um, he's working for Bank of Montreal for 14 years. And part of that, he was with IBM Canada. And you know, like he really is pivotal in expanding the awards online Australia. You know, the what the how we use the system is really like Kuya Jovi's baby, really. He manages the software and the back end of GBA. And he's on the side, he's also one of the directors for Gumil Canada. It's an Ilocano Writers Guild. Okay, so you wanna say hi. Hello po, Musta. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Awesome. And, you know, we have our two amazing panelists. Love these guys. I'm going to give a shout out to Louros Mercader. He's one of our GBA panel of judges. He's part of the technical committee as well. And, you know, let me tell you a little bit about this guy. He's the manager of the York Eglinton Business Improvement Area. He's an experienced city builder and communications professional. And, you know, he has a lot of a progressive career, you know, successful career in public and not for profit sectors. So he's very active and he's a co founder of Rice Tribe. Rice Tribe is a Filipino youth mentorship and leadership program. So he served on a couple of boards, um, a lot of them. So one of them would be the Canadian Mental Health Association and is a proud recipient of the Ontario Medal for Young Volunteers awarded by the Lieutenant. Hi, LaRose. How's it going? Good evening, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me here and uh, looking forward to sharing some insight to all our uh, potential um, uh, people who are nominating people for this year's uh, GBA 2021. 
So thank you for having me, Eric. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, can't wait to hear from you. But in a bit, last but not least, we have the amazing Judy Ann Hamidaba. She's a GBA 2018 winner. Um, a little bit about her. She's based in Winnipeg as an educator. So she supports administrators and teaching staff to enhance teacher practice um, and facilitates professional development sessions. So she performed and taught for Magdara Philippines Incorporated and represented Canada at festivals in Mexico, Peru, and Costa Rica. So um, really, um, Judy is the found Judy Ann is the founder of Delagita. So Delagita is a youth public speaking and leadership program. So she also runs a travel blog called uh, JudyMeetsWorld.com. You can follow her on IG as well as Luros. Um, and you know, um, what do you call this? She won the 2018 Golden Belangai Excellence in Media for her work and contributions in multimedia across Canada. And um, actually, two years ago, she was uh, one of our hosts um, in Winnipeg for GBA Host Ambassador. So hi, Judy Ann. Hi, Rachel. Thank you, everyone, for having me. I look forward to answering some questions tonight because I know even uh, when I was in your position thinking of who to nominate, uh, I know there's a lot of questions that come up. So I'm looking forward to uh, engaging with everyone later. Thanks for having me. Okay, guys. So you know what? Just to respect people's time, I'm going to go right ahead and uh, we're going to have your questions. So again, thank you guys for joining. Let's have maybe a uh, our co our co founder uh, Ronnie answered this. First of all, and for everyone's knowledge, yeah, we didn't have any awarding in 2020. Well, because of the pandemic. So originally, guys, it was supposed to be in Alberta, but that was deferred because of the lockdown. That's right. Um, so instead, uh, we did a tribute for frontline workers. So we kind of talked to our ambassadors who are involved with GBA and ask them to share and kind of like do a shout out to acknowledge our frontliners who are working really hard during this time. That's what we did just to like, you know, um, acknowledge them and thank them for all the work they're doing. So shout out to all the frontliners here. But prior to that, we were already getting nominations. So basically we were getting nominations for 2020, even though we didn't have a GBA 2020. So the question is, what happened to all those nominations, Sita Ronnie? Tell us what happened. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank all those who uh, participated in the Ansang Hero of GBA last year. We have a lot of, you know, uh, interaction and uh, feedbacks from that uh, program. And uh, yeah, uh, I salute all the uh, front, front, uh, frontliners natin. Uh, Filipinos. But anyway, go, going back to your question, Rachel, uh, we will going to carry over, uh, I believe we have over 50 nominations that was, got, that was gathered from 2020. And uh, we decided to carry over all those nominations. And the only thing though, is that we are going to uh, contact them. We already sent them communications for them to reconfirm and update whatever they submitted uh, from last year. So uh, I think uh, people are responding as soon as we send the communication. But for those who are still, don't get the, uh, the uh, what do you call this, the, uh, the communication from GBA, it might be on your inbox because it is uh, automated uh, emails that we are sending from to everyone. Okay, thank you for that. Um... Uh, second question here. Uh, let's uh, have have Jovi answer this. Um, the nomination opened up in March, and the last day to submit and complete nominations is on May 31. Okay, so what's the status of nominations right now? Uh, maybe I can uh, share a uh, historical uh, uh, facts of the nomination. Uh, the first year we were, we gathered a lot of uh, nomination about 120, 120 plus, but uh, most, uh, mostly maybe 40% uh, of those were incomplete. I think it was uh, normal for uh, starting uh, awards. And then the second year we got the, almost the same, but uh, we were so happy that uh, there were a lot of completes and uh, the nomination was pure and uh, the third year, uh, it was the same, almost uh, the same number, but uh, 
one good thing is like people are already encouraged to uh, self-nominate. This year, we carried forward the uh, 2020 nomination, as uh, Ronnie said. Uh, we started with 50 nominations from the 2020, and now we are heading to like 120 plus. But uh, we don't know if there are how many completes yet, but uh, we'll come up with the uh, numbers later. But we, we encourage everyone to still nominate. OK. So um, yeah, just to reiterate that, guys, the closing day for nominations is on May 31. Our next question is, you guys are probably wondering this, like, what requires a good nomination? Like, what's actually should be in there? So why don't we throw it to Luros? Yeah, I guess the first thing is to submit a fully completed nomination. I mean, it's kind of sad to hear that over the last uh, three cycles, 40% of the nominations um, weren't completed. And as a judge, you know, you can't really um, uh, get the full picture of somebody's sort of achievements. Um, and also you can't judge it fairly if, you're, if they're not completed. So I think the, the first thing is making sure that, you know, you are taking the time to complete that nomination pr process. I just went into the back end to try to see uh, how it's like to nominate somebody and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then I think the other thing is, this is the key thing is follow the instructions. <laughs> um, you know, if there's a space uh, for 300 uh, words to describe the achievements of the person, like really take the opportunity uh, to spell out, you know, what what are the achievement? What is the impact? Uh, and I know there's also an opportunity to, uh, to have sort of supporting documents uh, along with that. So other people could attest to sort of uh, your achievement if you're self-nominating or the person that you're nominating. Um, but my other advice is also to, to if, you, if you are going to be su uh, submitting sort of supporting uh, letters is not to s tell the same exact story three times. Uh, and perhaps ask them to, to give a different perspective of, of the impact that that individual is making. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I guess my final point would be is also is to take the time to um, make sure that you, you have all of the documentations in order before the May 31st deadline. A, a good rule of thumb for me is I usually lie to myself and say that it's due a week beforehand in my Google Calendar. Um, so it sort of reminds me that I still need, I still have some time to get everything together. So yeah, so I guess the, the, the key thing is making sure that you have everything in order, making sure that you tell a compelling story from different angles, uh, and then giving yourself the time to actually complete and submit the nomination. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I do that too. I give myself soft deadlines until the actual deadline. But what about you, Judy Ann? Like, you know, um, from your experience, other things that people should keep in mind or something that you think it's really important for them to include? That's I, yeah, I agree with Lurose's points, uh, especially about the supporting documents. So even um, if there are links or multimedia or, or other type of media coverage uh, that supports what you're doing, it, it's always good to see from an outside perspective of celebrating um, the achievements that, that you've had or your nominee has had. Um, I think it takes, just like what Lurose was saying, it does take a lot of time upfront to read the criteria, uh, really be thorough, um, and to try to also be concise. Like I'm also thinking from the judge's end last year or last time that we had done this, um, you, you kind of, you, there's a lot to go through. And if you're able to make a powerful um, impact in, in a concise way that also um, helps a lot with your nomination. Um, one thing too, like I know as a nominee, when I was nominated, I had the opportunity to actually also fill in the blanks. So they would, um, like I was able to kind of go in and also add in, in my own words, um, just kind of tweak uh, or, or add in something that I knew that I had done that maybe my nominator did not um, know up front. So, so having that opportunity, if you have someone in mind, um, communicate with them and ask them, you know, is, is this what, like, this is what I want to submit? Is there anything that I'm missing that, that you feel that you'd, you'd rather have on here to highlight? Thank you for that. Um, from a technical perspective, Jovi, um, I know that we want full some sort of sort of um, a good a variety of information, but could they just write in bullet points? Yeah, they exactly. can, they can, yeah. Because it's uh, the space in the uh, uh, nomination has the space to uh, specify those, uh, uh, those information. 
So it's a it's a pretext. So they can do that. Okay, because that might be helpful because if you were feeling a little bit daunted to think you'd have to write a 10-page essay, that is not true. The true thing is that, yes, complete your sentences and thought and bio, but really just you could write in bullet points, as Jovi has said. Okay, what about Titorone? I just want to ask you this other question. What are considered, um, what are the documents or references that they can upload or include that would be considered valid? Like that's something that's typical that you guys would be looking for. Okay, um, in the system, they're requiring you to uh, attach, first of all, your headshot. And the next one is the body shot. I don't know why we need the body shot, but maybe for future <laughs> modeling or what. But anyway, um, the documents is very important. Uh, we only have 300 words needed to, for you to describe your credentials. But if you need more, you can put it on your Word doc and attach it so that the judges will not having a hard time Googling your name and, you know, looking for some references. Give them, you know, <laughs> It's hard for the judges to uh, to make the decision, and also the, those certificates. Like if you are licensed or whatever, you're promo or you're you're backing up your your nomination. Submit the certificates, the awards, and I think we have five. Uh, five. You're allowed to submit five attachments. It can be JPEG. It can be uh, uh, yeah. doc and PDF, uh, no, not PDF, JPEG. So you can also, you know, the articles from the news or from the magazine that you were, let's say you have been featured, you can just screenshot and submit it or scan it. Those are the things that are very valuable and important for the judges. And also, um, Luros mentioned or Julian mentioned about the links of those footages that you have. I think those are the th those are the three things that required for you to submit. Yeah. So, for example, guys, you were featured in a magazine. Take a screenshot, take a pic, but then the link to that digital magazine so that they can make a reference. Right? Makes it easier for them. Exactly. It's not, yeah. And the documentation, guys, it's not like you don't need to like get it notarized. This is just like just making sure you got all the stuff in there. Okay. How's everybody doing? Are we okay? Okay. We're gonna go through the next few questions. Um. As a judge, okay, as the judge, Luros, mm. okay, um, what was the most impressive nomination you have come across? Like it says here, don't mention names, but <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, not, let's not mention names, but really like when you know, when you're reviewing all of these profiles, guys, what's amazing about Filipino Canadians is that there's so many amazing Filipino Canadians. This is exactly why we're doing this. You know, you could be nominated, you may not win, it doesn't matter. Everyone who, who goes in, there's something that they're doing something for the community, not just for themselves. And so it's hard for judges to be like, well, they're all doing so many great things. Yeah. It really is. But then there may, there may be those people that are just really like, really stands out. So Luros, tell us what's the most impressive one without naming uh, it. <laughs> well, I, I had the honor to be a judge in the inaugural awards back in 2017 and invited back in 2018. Uh, I missed the Winnipeg one. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, I judged categories around um, um, sort of youth leadership and, um, and entrepreneurship were the ones that I was given. Uh, and I, I got to I got to tell you, it was really hard a lot of the times to to go through these nominations. Uh, it was uh, really sort of heartwarming to, to read the stories of incredible um, young Filipino Canadians uh, who are making impact on other people's lives. Um, but really what made the difference or the tipping point for me as a judge is really is, is being able to tell sort of the, the story and really pull on my, my heartstrings um, when I'm reading uh, uh, the nomination. So I think uh, don't be afraid. I, I think don't be so robotic in terms of uh, making it seem like it's a resume or you're applying for a job. You know, it's not that kind of uh, <laughs> nomination process. Uh, this is more telling the person's story and impact. 
Um, and if you're able to do that with, you know, uh, concisely in that 300 sort of uh, word section, again, you don't need to, you know, write an essay, you could use bullet points, uh, but take us on a journey, um, of how that person started and the impact that they made. And then again, use the, those, those opportunities for supporting documents, uh, if they are available, photos, videos, links to articles, uh, and even if that's not available, just even getting those personal endorsements uh, from other people. So as you can see, there's so many opportunities to sort of shape uh, the impact that, the, that that person and that individual is making. Uh, so really take the opportunity and really take the time to, to sort of thread sort of a storyline for us. And remember, if we're going through, uh, I don't know, like 100 nominations, like, yeah, I think it needs to stand out. Um, and so I think even just that first opening sort of line uh, about what you're talking about, I need, it needs to be sort of attention grabbing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what, just a little maybe coming from my perspective too, is that um, if you need someone to double check your, your, your application, like maybe get a fan who's just yep. to get second set of eyes just to see oh you're missing this because sometimes if you've been looking at the same thing for so long you glaze over it right so yeah. if you have someone to just double check it why not just to take extra care for that um just to submit all of your complete amazing package right guys <laughs> okay all right so before i actually go to my next question i just want to tell you that you can like kind of um navigate through the the dashboard here um, it's kind of cool because you can check the events page and if you keep on clicking the links, you get points. And when you get points, you get a chance to win a Golden Balangay Awards merchandise, right? So play around with it. Um, and yeah, so we'll, we're going to be doing this again uh, the next May 7. So if you want to come back and bring your friends and bring their friends and everybody so we can talk about more nomination processes, let us know. That'd be awesome. Okay, so this next question is for Julianne. Um, share your experience about becoming a nominee and eventually nabbing GBA award. You're a winner. Tell us, what is it like? Uh, yeah, well, of course, it was like an absolute honor just to be nominated. Um, part of my, like, I think my favorite part of it was once all of the nominees were released, all of the names. So I actually got to see and do all these people, and I was just blown away. Like I was so uh, touched that someone thought like, oh yeah, you're at this level with these people. Like I was like, wow, like do you see what these people are doing? Um, so it, it's a way to share with the wider community. So um, the impact of it, I was actually hosting, like I couldn't come to Toronto because I was hosting like a fundraising gala for an organization here. Um, and it was during a break and I was backstage and my phone starts blowing up and people are tagging me and saying like, oh, you won the GBA. So uh, we had like a dance party backstage. Like it was, it was a great moment. Um, but in terms of the impact of it, uh, it was a way to really share about um, what was what I was passionate about and what I was able to bring to the table. And it really opened up a lot of opportunities, both uh, nationally across Canada and, and within my own city and my province. Um, and it has been just an honor to serve and, and to work with Golden Balang. I ended up hosting it the last time. So that was one of the opportunities that came through it. Um, and it even, uh, I became almost like a go-to person for, for that field. Um, so it, it became, yeah, just tons of opportunities came from it. Um, and I think even without, without winning per se, I think just having your name out there um, and having that, that time to connect with fellow nominees is, is powerful. Yeah, I, I get the same feeling too, because I remember um, we were in Winnipeg and I have to read the bios of the nominees and and I'm like, oh my God, how do these people judge? Because I don't even know the winners until like much, much later. I'm just, it's amazing like what people are doing. And it's true, like you may not necessarily always win, but just the fact that you're networking and talking to all these amazing people. So thank you guys for that answer. Um, I have a couple more questions for you guys. Um, and I'm going to throw it to um, any of the panelists or uh, Tito Rani or Jovi. Um, the, this is something that uh, in the beginning, people weren't comfortable doing this self-nomination, okay? They say, well, no, I don't feel comfortable nominating myself. Like, I get it. There's a sense of like, you wanna like be humble, there's a sense of humility and maybe you're shy or something like that, right? Um, the other 
going to that is eventually more and more people are doing that too. So my question is like, what are your thoughts on self-nomination guys? Because for me personally, like when, you know, like when you self-nominate, you have actually the access to the most information about what you do. It's like, you're actually right, the, 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 the source, you're the source, right? The second thing is guys, one of the reasons why I love, I love and I really support GBA because we really need to, um, how's the word, iangat, like the, the, the Filipino Canadians, we have so much to give. A lot of young people out there need mentorship, leadership, people to look up to from all vast of industries and whatever they're doing. So you gotta, like, I love it when people speak up and really shine a spotlight on them. And there's nothing wrong with that. So what about you guys? Can, can anyone, um, maybe uh, RDG, <laughs> what do you think of self-nomination? Yeah, you're right. Um, it's not our custom to uh, promote our own. But uh, guys, we are Canadian, Filipino Canadian. I think, uh, and based on awarding, I think it's better for you to participate, at least cooperate for the people nominating you. Mm. And self-nomination for me, it's, it's, it's not bad because you're the only one who know, who know your, your credentials, diba? Right? And I, I know there's a lot of good nominees, I think, from the past and yet didn't win because uh, I don't know why. Maybe one reason that I can think of, maybe they didn't participate, they didn't cooperate. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very important. The, the, the weight of your submission or your nomination is very crucial. You say he didn't, he didn't cooperate. Ibig sabihin, kulang yung information na nabigay, ganon? Yes, yes. Kasi there's, there's a per perception na, uh, I don't want to know. I, you know, you're the one nominating me. So you're the one responsible for giving all the information. Let's see. What about uh, Jovi? Anong suggestion mo if someone is not comfortable with self-nomination? What would you suggest to them? As RDG said, uh, you know better yourself, diba? Pero may yung ang, as, uh, as we know, Filipinos, uh, ayaw magbuat ng sariling bangko. But guys, we we know ourselves better. Uh, yung mga nag-nominate siguro sa inyo might miss something and it's better to really like go, go look up for the uh, nomination for your nomination, double check. And if there are more things that you need to add, please do so. What about Judy Ann? What do you think? What would you suggest? Um, I highly encourage it. I think it's it's a journey to get to the point for yourself that, that you feel comfortable nominating yourself. Um, and, and I think, yeah, we need to honor that those are valid feelings if, if you don't feel ready yet. Um, because there is a certain level of, of confidence that, that comes with that. Um, so I understand that, but I, I would suggest, even if you were to ask a loved one, ask someone that you trust, um, hey, you know, there's this awards that I heard about, there's a nominee, I'm kind of thinking about it, but I don't know. Um, and maybe all you need is a little encouragement uh, from someone in, in your circle and, and maybe they can start that process for you or with you and, and, and do that together it would be my, my recommendation for that. Right, okay, and Luros, anything to add? Yeah, I was just going to say that I think, you know, as a community, as a Filipino community, we have so many, so much incredible stories to share, but we're not very good at telling it and, and sharing it out there. And I think now we finally have this outlet with this awards um, um, system. Um, and I think the, the, the great thing about either nominating somebody or nominating yourself is that you're carrying it forward where you're able to sort of inspire sort of the next generation. Um, and, and I think that's the key thing. I think, uh, you know, the incredible the work that you're doing in your industries and, and blazing the trail. And a lot of times we're, we're the only sort of Filipino Canadian in the room or in that industry. And we can't be the last ones there. Uh, and so you're, it's really uh, lighting the torch for the next generation uh, by um, sharing your own story. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we need more of that and we need more people to encourage. And, you know, instead of 120 applications this year, I would love to double that. 
and, and keep doubling it every single year until we tell all the stories that are possible across Canada. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Okay, so we are halfway through our session here and we're going to open up uh, to the floor uh, if you have questions. And just a, a little bit of a reminder, if you have questions, just raise your hand. There's a raise hand button right below under reactions. Raise thy hand and then we will go to you so you can be put on the spotlight to ask your question. Um, and then if you can keep your questions direct to the point, that would be fantastic. Okay, so... Anyone have questions? Because we got half an hour before we uh, close the forum. Just keeping in mind of the time, that's all. Oh yeah, Noreen, did I see you raise your hand literally? Okay, awesome, go ahead. Hi everyone, I actually um, asked Kuya Ronnie about this. Um, last night was the first time I heard a, a communication from Golden Balangay. I did not receive the confirmation email. So who should I contact? Because I, I don't know any instruction, like I, I don't know. <laughs> who should I contact for that? Is it Kuya Ronnie or? Yeah, we have a website. If okay. you can... Uh, I'm very active yung, yung website ng Golden Balangay. At the same time, uh, it's a brand new website. And at the same time, uh, our social media accounts are very active. So you can just send us or direct message me or whoever or the page. And okay. someone will respond to you okay, right away. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, next question. Uh, we have Lori Phil Aguinaldo. Go ahead. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my question is uh, because I saw that uh, the nomination clause is on May 31st and then um, I'm not sure if I did if I read it correctly. Um, so from the 100 plus nominations, so are you going to choose the finalists? Like there's a final, uh, final thing? or whatever nominated is there, you will announce it on the day of the event. Good question. Who's able to answer that from our panelists? Okay, um, I think it's more on the system, uh, the, the process. Um, out of that 100 plus, uh, mind you, some of those or in the previous years, 40% are not complete. So whoever is com whoever nomination is completed that's the only one that the judges will will see so it's it's automated once you get completed that's the that's the nomination that judges will will see on their end and uh, that's the reason why we're getting a hold of everyone to complete someone is calling you will be calling you to complete your nomination and this is one way for us to help you guys uh in in the process of working on your nomination okay i hope that i, I answer your question did you have a follow-up question Lorica? or you're good okay yeah uh, and are, it's important to have a complete application otherwise you need a review yet exactly <laughs> but i think we wanted to clarify uh is there sort of a um what do you call it a um uh, a sort of finalized list of um, sort of um, candidates for every single category uh, that we announce, right? Yes. Yeah. Y yes, we will. We will. Uh, I can't remember the date, but after the process is after the ending of the nomination. Yeah. We will see how many percent are qualified. I mean, are completed. And those completed will be broadcasted or announced, communicated right. to everyone on the on the page, on the website or social media. Yeah. And, and then those, from there, yeah. you, you announce the winner on the on the night of. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Right. You'll do the judging first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's almost like there's um there's no no it's not really a short list of candidates. The short right. list is a complete application, Sinismo, right? Yeah. 
And speaking of that night off, um, before I go to the next question, what's going to be different this year? Because guys, um, if you're aware, the past few years, we the, the first one we held in Toronto, um, you know, we had a, an amazing, fantastic event. And then you know, the second one, um, where did we have it? It's also in Toronto. Yeah. So, you know, we actually have in, like in-person live events for these. It's amazing. So um, how is it going to be different this year? Can Can you guys answer that too? Okay, so we, we plan that we are going to, we already announced that it's going to be a live virtual event. And most likely, um, we'll be having one place for the, uh, for the host, for the MC, and whoever is in Toronto to uh, be on one place. But, you know, for the announcement of the winners. And the rest are going to be virtual like this. So it's, a, it's going to be a virtual live event. Because it's hard for us right now to uh, to uh, literally uh, you know um, book any venue and it's very risky for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a question here that came through the chat. It says one person with multiple nominations submitted. So one person but different categories. How does that work? Like, let's just say one person, you know, um, you know, I'm going to nominate, say, Judy Ann, for example, lang, right? But it happen. It, I guess I guess I could speak to it. Yeah, go um, ahead. Because so I had, I believe, three nominations. Um, and so I actually um, got to go into all three. Um, and I was given the chance to go in and, and update whatever was already submitted about me. Um, so in the case of multiple nominations, um, and my suggestion to that would be to read the criteria of what the judges are looking for for that, because the three I was in was like a youth leadership media, which, which I uh, won, and then I think community. Um, and so while that might sound similar, uh, it is very specific in their criteria. So I, I made sure that I went in and whatever supporting documents, whatever um, things I could, I could share to add on to what was already written about me, I tried to make it as specific as possible to each nomination. I want to add on, uh, Rachel, for uh, on that question. Okay. In the past, we're allowing that to have multiple nominations. Uh, some are like for Judian example, three nominations because she's qualified for those three categories. Um, but after the Winnipeg, we decided to limit the multiple nominations to maximum of two. So if you have three nominations that you qualify, most likely you're going to re receive a call from us saying, okay, which nominations are you going to push through? Yeah. You, you only have to have two nominations. Uh, and in a way, it's kind of better because then if you're already submitting applications, you want to be, be very focused in what category, right? And really have like a really complete fulsome package. But here's a, um, sorry, Lori Phil, do you have a follow-up question about that? See, Lori Phil? Your hand is raised. Yeah. No, uh, it's a different question. Is that okay? It's not uh, a bit related. It's about the segment. Uh, because I, I noticed your past uh, Balangay Awards that you have a segment for interviewed the nominees. And it makes me exciting because um, you can meet more the nominees, you get more excited about them, although some of them didn't won. So do you have that segment again, although you're doing a virtual thing? Well, you're asking if there's a segment on the website or on the actual no, uh, on the virtual event. Like for example, uh, before uh, before start the event, uh, the host is interviewing all the nominees like that. So do you still have that? Or oh, yeah, like, uh, like a uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's more exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> what what do we have, Tito? We need we need to talk about that, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, basically, uh, we want to, as much as we can, we want to follow the uh, the standard that we put up from day one. But right now, we are in a virtual world. Uh, we might change a bit, but the interview, it might it still happen. It might still happen. B but I think, back a virtual na lang, like this. 
Rachel will contact whoever on the list and do the one-on-one -on -one interview. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's still in the works, but yeah, we will figure it out. Attention. Um, if we have a, a final response, it will be posted on the on the website or our socials. So we'll keep that in mind. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I have a question here from the chat too. What about um, nomin? You know, you get multiple people nominating you one person in one category. So how does GBA deal with that? Supposedly, um, I, I don't know, we're nominating Julianne again, but from different people across Canada in one category. How does GBA deal with that? It's not a popularity contest, kasi racially. So we, uh, there are committees that uh, we, we uh, request sometimes to review which one makes sense with the category. For mm -hmm. example, I was nominated for the music award and uh, uh, somebody submitted a nomination that uh, seems very far from the music category. So we will review all the... Uh, the nomination to the person at titingnan namin kung ano yung mas angkop dun sa ano sa category na pinagsubmitan so we we only uh, ano pipili lang kami ng isa and it's not based on how many people nominated during that category no. it comes down to the kind of what uh, makes sense yeah and what <laughs> sense and the, the substance of the application and everything yes. like that, right so because yeah. it's not a, an awards online where you just vote, 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 and then get the most votes, you win. That's just not how it works. No, it, it's not like that, Rachel. Um, yeah, the, some some people has an impression, siguro na ganon, that it's the number of uh, nominee uh, nominator makes you win the competition or the the award. It's not. It's it's the substance of your nomination. Kahit isa lang, isang nomination lang, as long as it's 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 concise and fit with the with the category, uh, you have a very very good chance of winning the uh, the uh, the award. Awesome. So, does anyone else have questions? We have about uh, one minutes left. You can speak now, or <laughs> anyone else. Okay, well, um, just to remind you, um, what do you call this? Our next one is May 7. We'll have something like this too. This is actually, guys, our first time doing this. So it's in a way we're exploring this, this format, exploring how this can help you guys um, with the nomination process. So if you feel like you, you know, there's other people that you wanna share this with, invite them to the May 7 because it's very useful we'd like to hear directly from you guys right um does uh anyone else have questions here or excited that you want to nominate manalo kumain like celebrate oh okay we have one yan uh let's have a watch please yeah uh, my question this is my first time to join this and uh, i just read a while ago what's uh, ga uh, is there a uh, uh, like a small video to promote this? You know, to encourage other organization to participate in you know in, <clears throat> in my province. Uh, how do we disseminate this? Just send them the link or what? That's a good question. Tagasan po kayo. Ah, Saskatchewan. Yay! All the way in Saskatchewan. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so paano yung we spread the word? Well, you know, a lot of our our online platform is just on, you know, Facebook. If you're using that, you can repost, reshare the page. Um, you know, if you have specific people that you think could be part of this conversation, really make it a point to um, share the poster from our, first of all, like our Golden Balangai Awards page, please. <laughs> Follow nyo kami, please. Like it. And don't let updates. Tsaka makikita yung mga, you know, gagawin natin in the future. So, unang-una, let's start with that. And then, um, yung sa May 7, if you guys have specific people that you want, you know, to be part of this nomination or to get more information, to start networking, then invite them to that one because you saw what it's like now, right? 
we'll have a bigger audience next time too. So um, if you can ask Titroni uh, or Jovi for, for the, the link or information on how to share that or just share directly from our GBA page. Because it's like, it's, like, it's like the same way you register and then we send you a reminder on when it is and then you just join the fun. Anything else though? Yeah, can, can I say something? Uh, thank you, Butch. Uh, Butch is one of our director, uh, FCNC. Oh. And good thing that he attended this uh, session. So he can disseminate <laughs> from his area. Yeah, uh, just to want to give you a little bit of background. Um, when we started 2017, right? Looking back the statistics, I would say 80% nomine 80% nominations are from Ontario mm. and then it grow and then uh, the percentage of the young younger ones and the uh, you know the the not so young is very unlayo well no there's no much nomination from the younger ones but when we get racial no no <laughs> the second year um, we have a balance of you know the uh, millennials and the uh, the nominations from from the younger ones that's that's why we were so passionate and you know, we were so encouraged to to continue and then the third the 2019 uh this is when the time that we notice there's a lot of out of town out of toronto out of ontario nominations in fact, I think it's higher percentage than the Ontario nominations. So uh, just to uh, share with Boots uh, about that, the, our experience, and now we are reaching uh, SK, right? Saskatchewan. So we haven't received any, I believe, oh, there's one. If I can remember it correctly, there's one nomination from last year from 2019 from Saskatchewan but we are the 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 mission of Golden Balangay really is to reach every Filipino in Canada that is making a big difference in their own little way in their own community so that that is what we need it's it's not the usual thing that we you know uh, we're seeing in the main or the big city but we want to hear the story of our fellow Filipino or Kababayan from, you know, a small town of, of different cities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to answer that question, we uh, activated our website. We're so active with our social media. And um, we have this campaign, the newsletter we just started. So you will be receiving a regular newsletter from, from GBA and maybe we will feature from from time to time some winners on on those uh, on different years yeah mm -hmm. so we'll do we will do an active campaign mm -hmm. and we also asked our previous past winners to share the word right because they've, exactly. they've, they've experienced it so we really like um you know keep keep that connection and ask them to to do the same for others but you know i have a question here in the chat who picks the judges who can answer that panelist? Good question. Okay, I think I'm going to I'm going to start answering that question. But you can add on, Brother Jovi. Uh, the judges. Uh, to give you a background of the judges, we have there's a lot of judges. It's not only Luros. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I thank you. Uh, you know, I think I appreciate Luros because he is part of our when we conceptualize this. He is, he is already there. He gave his inputs in everything because he believes on the project. Mm -hmm. And he chose not to be nominated. I know he's so qualified and so, I'm, I'm inspired with this guy. He's so qualified, but he chose to be a judge rather than to be the uh, nominee. Anyway, uh, to pick the judges, it's based on our networks. We, but the judges is not limited from Toronto, from Canada. We have some judges from Philippines, from the US, 
former ambassador of Canada. Nag-judge siya for, uh, I believe, two consecutive years. And we have uh, an award-winning actor from the Philippines. He also joined the judge, uh, panel of judges. And also from the U.S., a famous YouTuber, singer. She also joined as part of the panel of judges. Maybe we can get Isco Moreno to be a judge this year. And you know what, guys? The mayor of Manila. <laughs> and if you're curious for past judges, it's all on the website, even their photos and their cred credentials, like their right. designation, right? You'll see there's a lot of amazing judges here too. Um, so you can you can check that out because the website is pretty complete. Yes. And and to add to that, uh, Rachel, and uh, the judges, uh, for we also give the chance to the previous winners to judge. So that they will see the complete cycle of the system. Nice. Right? Yeah. So uh, sometimes you'll be, you know, when you get nominated, you'll be surprised. Oh, how, how did I win? <laughs> right? <laughs> so now, now it's your time to serve mm. and to do your own thing, to judge, so that you can see the whole picture and the transparency of the system. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. After uh, I, I, I have something to add to that. Uh, Normally, we want to make sure that the judge to be part of the to judge the category. They are somewhat uh, like expert to that category. Mm. Like for example, uh, for the music, we want to make sure na at mm. least may taste siya ng music. Okay, andun siya dun sa andun siya sa sa category na expert siya or sa, he has something to do with that. At least uh, masasabi mo na uh may karapatan siyang mag-judge dahil magaling yeah. siyang singer or magaling siyang composer so parang ganun yeah thank you for that that's a very important piece is that there has to be a sense of authority from the judge to be judging right uh yeah. that makes sense i have a couple more questions here are there any plans of adding more categories kasi madami tayong categories guys pero are we adding more or wala. Yes, I, I, can, I can. Uh, go ahead. Bro. I can. Uh, be, yeah, I can answer something there. In, uh, I think one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, brother Ronnie. But uh, there's a plan not only to add, but like, uh, for example, the uh, uh, arts award. We, there's a plan to himay himayen in a specific category. Dun sa halimbawa for the youth for the not so youth or <laughs> do sa musician or sa mga artist parang we want to like the future plan is to really have a specific category for a specific uh na yung mga ganun mga uh different uh, uh what do you call it different aspect of the category mm. Mm -hmm. that, that's actually a great idea. I think you're, what you're trying to say is that potentially, you know, in a category, there could be sort of an emerging artist award and then more of a, an established mature artist, right? Because, you know, that I guess also as a judge, how do you how do you distinguish somebody who's just starting off in their career to somebody who's been, you know, in the industry for 20 years? So that might be worthwhile exploring in the future. Yeah, that's what we noticed, actually, the rose. Yeah is that there's an amazing emerging new artists or uh, new startup entrepreneurs and yep. how they compete with legends and people who have been established, right? So it's an important distinction. Yeah, we haven't had this uh, discussion about, you know, uh, for the young, you know, young nominees to kind of separate the, the younger ones from it depends on the category, actually. But it might not actually be even age because you could be emerging as an artist some, when you're really older, right? So yeah, it yeah. It may yeah. not necessarily be age-wise. It, it may be where you are in your career. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we're we're turning five years next year. So I think that is going to be the big announcement. We we need your help, guys, especially those who are previous winners. We will gather for sure to, um, you know, 
to put our, our ideas together so that we can make this community a better one. Yay. Yeah. And with that, we are wrapping up with all the questions. Guys, if you have follow-up questions, don't hesitate to send a message through the Golden Belonga Awards chat on Facebook. They will get back to you. And join us again for May 7. That's going to happen uh, our next one. Um, Luros will be back too. I'll be back. <laughs> um, Julian's going to be out of town. I think she's going to be um, elsewhere. But you know what? Thank you guys for being here and answering the questions. We appreciate it on a Friday night. Um, we'll have, what do you call this? We'll have more time to maybe collect the existing questions and put it together so we have it in writing and then we'll do more follow-ups on May 7. And don't forget guys, if you walk around here and click through the links, you get to explore this virtual world we live in now and you get a chance to get Golden Blanc Awards merchandise. Hindi Golden Blanc Awards na awards yet. Pero yung merchandise pwede. Okay guys? Spread the word, tell your friends, and um, what it calls any last uh, any last uh, final words and tips from let's start with our panelists, Judy Ann. You have anything else to say before we wrap up? Rachel, can mm -hmm. I make a request? I you think uh, <laughs> one of our winner oh. uh, from Edmonton. She just logged in. She's having trouble the whole time. Oh, Tita Virgie. Tita Virgie is in the in is at the <laughs> background now. Uh, maybe we can we can. Uh -huh. Get some, uh, you know, hear from a few words from her, if you don't yes, mind. Sir, Sita, let's let's have you on board. Spotlight, woohoo! Welcome. <laughs> Nakamute ka. Yan. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, po. I can't evening. wait to see our new awardees in GBA. Uh, I was just hoping that we will have one awardee for uh, something about. Are in relation to the pandemic, Bedroni, okay. from the essential workers, if we can have a special award for that. What do you think? Uh, for now, I think it's because the system is already built and it's hard for us to tweak once it's already launched. Okay. So uh, it's, it's going to be hard, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. 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 That could have been a, a very maybe, important. Maybe that will fall on the Pinoy of the year. If you know someone that mm. really worked hard for this, you know, uh, the situations that we have for two years, that is a good candidate for Pinoy of the year. Yeah. It might, might yeah. be field of business or whatever, healthcare, or I think that that is a good uh, mm -hmm. candidate. For Pinoy of the Year. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can include that in the criteria. Mm -hmm. They become Pinoy of the uh, Pinoy of the Year if, if blah 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 become become best business awardees if they they blank something related to they help they have contributed to the community uh, with regards to pandemic. Yeah, we'll take note, Paul. We'll we'll take note of that, and we'll we'll announce. We'll we'll yeah. decide. Yeah, uh, I can see that we have one PBSA member here. That's Lori Phil. Hi, Lori Phil. <laughs> oh, is she from Edmonton as well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's one of the PBSA members. Uh, are you one of the nominees, Lori Phil? Lori Phil, are you muted? She's not answering. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's one of the, the nominee. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. Nasa Pilipinas po ako ngayon. Actually, oh. <laughs> still working remotely. Kahit nasa Pilipinas. Wow, thank you for joining wow. all the way from Philippines. But, okay. Yeah, we'll keep that in mind, Tita Virgie, um, your recommendation. And the other thing that I'm thinking just top of mind is that when we did a tribute for frontliners this past year, we could somehow bring that back in again and do a refresh. Yeah. To add more because that could be part of our virtual ceremonies right because everyone i mean there's a lot of people who yeah. need to acknowledge too so that could be part of a segment that we were thinking of adding um now uh do we have anything from our panelists uh julian and luros uh, you want to add tips or something before we wrap up okay thank you guys 
Thank you. Thank you. Say, uh, to just really think about um, your local community, right? Like there are a lot of people doing a lot of work and, and it's often like understated or, or it's overlooked, um, but really look at those hardworking people who are dedicated to their craft. And, and this year, like as I'm thinking of my own nominations uh, in each category, I'm really looking for those underdogs because I feel like they just kind of need that lift, that boost um, and that encouragement. So, so that's one of the things that I'm considering when I'm, when I'm thinking of my nominees coming up. Awesome, thank you, Judy Ann. How about you, LaRose? Yeah, same same thing. I think we're, we're looking for those unsung heroes and there's, there's so many of them uh, across the country and in our, in our cities. So really take the, to, the time between now and, and the end of May to think about uh, who you would like to recognize and who we need to celebrate uh, for this year. Awesome. And remember to complete your application form <laughs> <laughs> or it doesn't count. <laughs> Like Salita and Judge, um, what about, um, I'm going to uh, leave it to our, our co-founders, uh, founders of our GBA, uh, Joey Favila and uh, Tito Roni de la Gana. Do you guys have any a few words before we wrap up this session? I'll go first. Nominate more. Nominate more. <laughs> 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 well, well, I think uh, for me, um, you know, we're, we're still on on a pandemic situation, right? And some people may ask, why these guys, GBA, are keep on, you know, doing this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, we are experiencing this situation. Uh, we are looking at on a different perspective. We've been burdened by this pandemic for two years now, diba? Right? But I think GBA will help, will be a help to, uh, to enlighten and to inspire more kababayans. So with that, I think uh, it is, kailangan din siya. We, we, need, we need those. And besides, we did not stop working, di ba? So we didn't stop uh, inspiring other people. In fact, there's a lot of discoveries and and uh, nakita niyo yung mga works ng, ng mga frontliners and and our kababayans in different provinces. So with that, I think uh, it is needed. There you go. I mean, how? what else to say? That's an amazing speech, RDG. Thank you guys for joining our first Q&A live. Our next one, just a couple of dates to remember, is May 7 is our next uh, session like this. So. You know, if you can't attend, invite others to attend or attend again because you have a follow up question. Um, so let's bring on more people to the conversation, like our GBA page and our Instagram as well. And any of your follow up questions, you can send to that, send to us, and we will um, give you the answers. Um, before I really, really wrap up again, I want to say thank you uh, to GBA committee team for. Um, for, for having me to, 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 to be an ambassador, to host, it's really an honor. I love working with you guys. I appreciate your time. I know everyone is dealing and coping with the pandemic very, very differently, right? So stay strong guys and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, RDG, Jovi, Judy Ann, Luros, and visit our website. There's so much more information there. Thank you for your time. <laughs>